Yeah, so I, I think we can uh, get started pretty soon. Um, Christoph Helwig is going to be talking about the SCSI mid-layer changes, followed by SMR, followed by Burned. He's going to be talking about things. And then we'll do some open topics at the end of the day. We do have to wrap up by 4.45 because the hotel needs to tear down the room. But we have time to talk after that, of course. Just a, a couple of other quick notes. If we have slides like Carlos, I heard if you log back in, you can submit your slides through the submission system and upload them. Videos of all the talks were recorded this morning, so people will be able to see that. And, and again, please use the mic when you talk so you'll be captured on video. Dave, if you want to lurk in the back, we aren't going to hear from you. You make my life miserable running the mic to and fro. So with that, Christoph, off you go. Okay, so this is not a presentation, just want to kick off some discussion on the SCSI mid-layer scalability issues we've been seeing more and more recently. So to get started, we're having a couple vendors that both on existing iSCSI NAS systems that are using flash storage or anything else that is high IOPS complaining about severe limitations in the Linux initiator. We've had whole drivers like the new um, SCSI over PCI Express that HP is working on implemented at the block layer, even if they're like really just another transport for a standard SAM protocol. Pretty similar for Mellanox for their own ICER initiator. And just to get like the numbers that we've measured that we can say is like the highest numbers we've seen out of the existing SCSI mid layer that's using the traditional Linux block layer, we get around 300,000 IOPS per second on a single run, and that's really kicking it. While we can easily get over a million without much tuning if we actually replace it with a prototype that uses the block multi queue work, which um, Nick Bellinger has been working on. And um, I wanted to start with a little to-do list of uh, where we need to get going, and that starts with Kicking Jens, who's unfortunately not here. Who's the, yeah, makes it much easier to badmouth him. So Jens is the Linux block layer maintainer, and he's been working on this block multi-queue support, which is essentially a rewrite of the lower level of the block layer, which deals with the hardware devices to A, allow it to be um, pretty efficient even for a single queue, despite the name. So uh, avoid the number of lock round trips you have for an IO submission, avoid the number of cache land bounces, do a pretty good consumer producer thread setup. And as the name implies, actually supports multiple hardware queues too, which is important for some of the more efficient hardware. So we can have different processes having their own queues on different CPUs, different NUMA nodes, whatever affinity we're doing. And the prototype that uses this in SCSI, the so-called SCSI multi-queue work, uh, actually isn't multi-queue despite the name, which makes it a little confusing. It actually just used the single queue feature of block multi-queue. But even with that one, we can easily get a couple million of IOPS without doing it. The problem is that the code is still fairly prototype quality, if I want to say it nicely and is missing various of the assumptions we have in the mid layer, which also make it slower. It's like um, making sure multiple runs on a single target get balanced when we run out of the resources to serve them. And that's another area where we're actually very limited in the SCSI mid layer. It's like um, the counters on the target. We have all these target-wide, host-wide locks that we want removed. And it seems like no one's really making any progress on that. So one array vendor was actually trying to hire me to do some of that work, and I was trying to present it. But paperwork always takes longer than you'd expect, so that work's not actually happened. But we already know a lot of the issues. And I was mostly trying to reach out to everyone who's done any work in that area and see where we can collaborate, where we can see how to get the block multi-queue work in. And I think Rick has a comment on that. I'm not sure if that's yeah, so going to be public. Yeah, I, I do have that mic thing. Yeah, so uh, to Christoph's point, I mean, we're going to try to make sure that it lands in RHEL 7. It, it won't help like RHEL 6 or the install base, but going forward a year or so, uh, Jeff and others have been, uh, Mike Snitzer have been working to pull that in for us. 
I think you need to opt into it, right? It's a new device yep. interface. So existing device drivers need to be modified to take advantage of the multi-queue interfaces. I think Yins had worked on, who knows better than I? I he did the um, uh, NVMe Express driver, I think. I think he's done that one. He's done the, um, the yeah, well, what is it? The, um, yeah. Like a Micron PCI Express flash device, which is kind of funny given that he works for Fusion IO. And um, what's not actually in the base tree is, as I said, the SCSI multi queue work done by Nicholas Bellinger, which is kind of interesting because it's still opt in for the device drivers, despite the drivers not actually needing to implement any kind of different interface. So I was hoping if we get a few more people working on this, that we could actually make this the default for any SCSI device at some point. How, how many people in the room would like to go faster with SCSI? And, and keep your hands up. How many people are going to help us? <laughs> yeah. And what I'd actually be really interested in is who has actually, is not just concerned about the numbers, but has seen real limitations for their workloads or products. So people are not running into that in this room yet. No one, no, because you SCSI and Diablo. So, okay. yeah, I, I mean, this is a limit. You, you guys will see it. We run into the system lab department. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, we want to let, you want to run into it in the lab today so that we can fix it before it gets to your field tomorrow. Because yeah. I, I, in my experience, when you sell someone something that does like 10 million IOs per second and you only get like half a million IOs per second out of it, they're really annoyed. Typically, yeah. 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 And I mean, that's the reason why the only company, which I don't want to name here yet because it's not public, is actually stepping forward to fund some of that work because they're trying to sell a target device that can do it. And Windows can at least use some of it, but Linux is actually even better than Windows, something we haven't really been at on the I.O. side for a long time. Yeah, so don't we have, I mean, we have a bunch of storage companies that do all SSD, all flash targets, right, kind of the interface? Yeah. Is it Pure? Or what are they? Pure is doing one, but it's not actually very high IOPS because they're more focused on storage efficiency and doing like crazy DDUP, which means they don't actually go up to the super high IOP rates. But they'll get there eventually. And we're looking for James to beat up. He is wandering around, but he was dealing with plumbers organizing uh, crises. So, yeah. What do we need from James? I mean, generally, on the I, SCSI I side, mean, my impression now that I got a lot back more into SCSI work is that we actually have a huge delay on any sort of SCSI mid-layer patches. There's like error handling work that's from um, Hannes Reinecke, which is really helping with this because it allows us to do basic aborts outside of an error handling context that will stop all I.O. to a given host. If um, people are interested in the air handling stuff, uh, take a look at the patches that Hannes posted and uh, act them if, uh, with some comments about how you think right. they're helping. Maybe we can get that move forward. Right. And I mean, it, both on the block side and the SCSI side, it seems we just have way too busy maintainers for some reason that we're making very little forward progress while all the groundwork is there and it's really just things that need to be refined and perfected and be shipped. This is why I'm actually well, I was surprised but happy when Rick said Red Hat's actually trying to pull in the block multi queue work because that's a very good way to make sure um, it yeah, gets so more traction. I mean, just, just to state the obvious, this isn't a Red Hat business secret, but enterprise distros do this horribly boring job of having to maintain things forever, like 10 years. So we don't want to come out with a major new version of our product and last for a decade in the market and not be able to scale up to modern I.O. So multi queue is critical for us, yeah. I think, going forward. And the other thing you guys should look at is the, the SCSI multi-queue work will cause all kinds of changes to public data structures, so you might want to prepare for that, if, even if you can't pull it all in. All right, so I don't know if we, uh, without, with James not being here, yeah. I don't know if we can beat anything too much. We can no. just assign him a lot of work to do. <laughs> Okay, yeah, there was some, okay, so we'll, we can come back and touch on this later. Too, right. Yeah. yeah, so maybe, I know I know what he was dealing with, so I don't want to pull him in if he's busy, but, um, yeah. 
And yeah, I was mostly trying to nudge people to move faster and maybe trying to find others that have other aspects and have actually done more log profiling than the some workloads I have done. But it seems most people just want it fixed and or <laughs> watch it. I don't care how, how it's done as long as it's faster. Yeah, so what we can do actually, if you want, we can go to the SMR drive presentations next and maybe come back to Scuzzy if games gets free. Maybe that's a, a way to. Yeah, that's probably out. the longest slot we'll need today anyway. Okay, so why don't we. So, um, who's going to present? You guys have some.